If you want to help out and support the channel, there are a few things you can do. Go check out Flipside Gaming and use the promo code VOIDMAGE in all caps. This will get you 10% off all orders, $10 or more. And if you go shopping on TCGplayer.com, go use my affiliate link in the description below. That way, all purchases you make will go towards helping the channel. And lastly, go check out my Patreon. It's a more direct way that you can help the channel while also getting some more interaction. I appreciate all of your support. If you haven't already, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Hello everyone, welcome back to another Commander Deck Tech video. This time for patron William Grove. We're changing it up a bit. I'm gonna go do an unofficial commander for a long time, especially before we had the four color commanders from Commander 2016. The Nephilim were go-to commander options. If you wanted to fool around, give yourself access to more colors than just three and one less than five. In most play groups, I think people are understanding. The Nephilim are not broken by any means. If anything, you can make the argument that you're worse off playing them, but it's always a challenge. It's always interesting to see what kind of interactions you can come up with, and I have no problem making this deck tag for you William. It has been quite a while since I've ever considered using the Nephilim and Dune Brood Nephilim I think is a pretty good option giving you synergy with tokens as well as lands. And as is typical with the more colors you play in Commander the more strategies you can fool around with. So reading Dune Brood Nephilim real quick 4 mana, black, red, green, and white for a 3-3 Nephilim. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, put a 1-1 colorless sand creature token into play for each land you control. I honestly do wish that these were legendary because they're not busted at all. It's a combat damage trigger which isn't always a guarantee and it's made harder by the fact that it doesn't have any kind of evasion built in. It's just a 3-3. But starting it off here with the lands, I always go over lands first. We're going to play fetch lands, we're going to play the shock lands, but a land that I think is an automatic include for a lot of land decks field of the dead shouldn't be hard in a four color deck to get seven different lands and once we do that pretty much every land drop we get is going to reward us with a 2-2 zombie another utility land is going to be rogues passage most of our other lands are going to focus on mana fixing this is going to help us deal damage with dune brood nephilim it is quite a bit of mana five if you include tapping it but when you deal damage you will get those tokens so it is definitely worth it moving on from that this deck is all about ramp since Dune Brood cares about our lands, the total number of lands we have, we want to get as many of them as possible, so by the time that we are able to deal damage with Dune Brood, we can start getting those tokens. Now in creature form, we do have Sakura Tribe Elder, Burnished Heart, creatures that could just sacrifice themselves to give us lands, the new Spring Bloom Druid, basically Harrow on an ETB, sacrificing a land, don't worry about it, because lands in our graveyard are often just as good as they are in our hand, and this is why I love four colors, you can fool around with other things. Karametra God of Harvests. Whenever we cast a creature spell, we get to search our library for a forest or a plains and put it onto the battlefield tapped. It's the interesting thing. You're either playing Jund with a splash of white or Naya with a splash of black. I guess it depends on how you view white and black, seeing as this is mostly going to be a land strategy. We have some sorceries like Explore, gonna let us play an additional land, and we get to draw a card. And then we have the usual suspects like Farseek, Cultivate, and Kodama's Reach. The more colors you play, these are pretty much staples. If it wasn't a land deck, I would probably just keep it to these in sorcery form, but we also have Circuitous Route, just going to give us two basic lands. Temp with Discovery can be pretty ridiculous if your opponents all say yes. The more lands you can search up, and since it's any land, you could get yourself a Field of the Dead, or if you need to deal damage, get yourself a Rogue's Passage. And depending on the situation, this can really be a game-winning card, Boundless Realms. Get to search your library for up to X basic lands, where X is the number of lands you control. You get to put them straight onto the battlefield tapped. More lands you have, the more tokens you're going to get off of Dune Brood, and the more tokens you get, the nastier your win cons will become. Now in instant form, we just have Harrow. We do sacrifice a land, but again, we get to search our library for two basic land cards, making it well worth it, and some other cards that are going to help us ramp up a bit. We have Burgeoning, Colony Heart Expedition, as well as Growing Rights of Itlamok. While it doesn't give us a land, it becomes a land, which is pretty much a guy's cradle. Since we're playing tokens, that's going to net us a bunch of green mana. But we're not done there because because we also have extra land drops. We do have Exploration, allowing us to play an additional land on each of our turns. We have Wayward Swordtooth, which is pretty much the same thing, but on a 5-5 Dinosaur. Mina and Den have the benefit of giving our Dune Brood Trample, which may not come into play all the time, but it's a nice feature to have. And we have the Gitrog Monster, just a really solid engine in any land deck that happens to play black and green. Gonna reward us with card draw by sacrificing those lands. Now we do have some bigger plays that are gonna reward us with the bunch of lands. 
We have the always deadly scape shift, can get us whatever lands we want, which can be really deadly if we have Field of the Dead or if we want to get Field of the Dead. Remember, it counts for every land ETB, so you could end up with a bunch of those zombies. It's also just a really nice card to have because we can mess around with our graveyard, playing cards like Splendid Reclamation and World Shaper. Both of these have the potential to give us back all of our land cards from our graveyard, and with cards like Field of the Dead or just any good card that can reward us for land drops, it can get out of hand. Now that being said, we're obviously going to be playing cards like Crucible of Worlds and Ramen Up Excavator. If we have extra land drops, it's really nice to have these cards because then we could just play fetch lands, replay the fetch lands so that we can fetch more lands. And going for more synergy, Lord Windgrace is perfect for the deck. This is what I was talking about when I was saying Jund with a splash of white, because often that's how it feels. His minus is perfect for getting back lands that we fetch with, or after Gitrog Monster, giving us even more card draw. Just overall, a very powerful card to have in any land strategy, even if he's not the commander. Now before I get into talking about how we're going to win the game, we want to make sure that we can swing in with Dunebrood Nephilim, or at the very least protect it. We have some very good equipment like lightning greaves but we also have some ways of making it unblockable with prowler's helm trailblazer's boots and whisper silk cloak depending on the opponent most of these are going to let you just swing in uncontested doesn't matter how much damage you deal as long as you're able to deal some damage you will get those tokens we have some enchantments that are going to help us do this as well dothy embrace we can just pay two black mana and give it shadow until end of turn might be a bit more expensive if you're doing this every turn shield of the oversoul i think is a little bit better not only will we give it evasion but we can give it indestructible and plus two plus two since it's both green and white sleepers guile is criminally underrated it can't be blocked by artifact creatures and by black creatures and when it's put into a graveyard from play just like Rancor, you return it to your hand. And probably my favorite card for accomplishing this is Unquestioned Authority, simply because it gives you protection from creatures, which is just as good as Unblockable. Enters the battlefield, you draw a card. Guys, that is so important that you deal that damage, because once you do, once we get those tokens, that's when the real fun begins. We have Goblin Bombardment. We can sacrifice a creature to deal one damage to target creature or player. This is always a nice contingency to have. I don't always treat it like a win con, because most of the time it isn't. But you better believe that you can start threatening players when you start building your board once you get those tokens out there if your opponents want to board wipe you can sacrifice all of them in retaliation it's just a wonderful card beastmaster ascension like the other ascensions it's going to get quest counters that happens whenever you attack with a creature and if it has seven or more quest counters all of your creatures get plus five plus five so it's very easy to do this the turn after you've attacked and got all those sand tokens and you only need to attack with seven and all those creatures are going to be six sixes your dune brood is going to be an eight eight very nasty card and you don't even really need trample and that's still pretty powerful as always with any token deck you're going to want to wait to double your tokens so we have anointed procession and parallel lives to do that don't worry about doubling season it's too expensive anyway these are just fine they will do enough and if you really care about counters just play cather's crusade so instead of just going wide we are going big for each creature entering the battlefield which can be crazy if we get all of those creatures at the same time with dune brood nephilim we also have perforos god of the forge so if you wanted an actual win con not a goblin bombardment this can win you the game if you have a bunch of lands and you deal damage with dune brood you can realistically get 10 tokens off of that and then deal 20 to each opponent with the perforos which does help you kill off your opponents another card i have in here is throw the insatiable it has devour x where x is the number of creatures devoured this way yeah we don't have a way to give it trample but all of the same cards that we could use to make dune brood unblockable we can also use that for throw to make it just this massive hellion all by itself it could kill off players and if that doesn't work we also have crater hoof behemoth not always my favorite card to go to for winning but when you have a bunch of tokens when you can go wide so easily why not go for one of the easiest wins in green we also have a couple sorceries that are going to help us win overwhelming stampede and titanic ultimatum we do not want to swing in with our one ones we want to leave them as blockers at the very least and then wait for an opportunity to swing all out after we drop cards like these but anyway Anyway guys that's going to do it for the deck it's pretty simple it's a little bit of everything all the land strategies and commander i'm sure you've seen them everywhere but i just really like the idea of the nephilim becoming legendary creatures because you can play with a little bit of everything you have omnath locus of rage you have the gitrog monster you have karametra god of harvests 
popular land strategies that you don't always think of together. That's the real beauty of playing a four or five color deck in my opinion. But anyway, thanks again, William, for being a patron. You all have a wonderful day. Void here signing off. See you all next video. Just wanted to say thanks to the patrons who are supporting me on Patreon.com. Go check it out. There are different tiers with their own rewards. One of them is having your name in the credits of my videos. I know it's not much, but it's something that I can do to show my appreciation. Thanks again, and have a good day.